All right, welcome back to another episode of Code Like a Pro. We are finishing up our section on the solid principles, uh, going to be talking about the dependency inversion principle, my favorite principle of all five principles, uh, mainly because I, I really do use it almost daily and I find that it to be one of the most helpful. I didn't fully understand why, um, but the more and more I've practiced the solid principles, the dependency inversion principle has been a crucial one for me to maintain my code and make sure that it's clean and does what it needs to do. So what is the idea? You're going to see if you if you go and you do a Google search uh, on the dependency inversion principle, you're going to see something like this. High level objects should not depend on low level implementations or high level modules should not depend on low level modules. Something very similar to that. And you might say, okay, um, Okay, uh, so <laughs> what does that mean? Well, um, three main things, and kind of duplicated this, uh, but uh, duplicated the first and second one. We want to depend on uh, depend on abstractions. That's supposed to be on, and uh, abstractions should not depend on low-level details. And we just want to generally support abstracting our code. Now, the dependency inversion principle is quite unique um, in the fact that there are several great ways that you can use this and we've talked to and remember it, it relates to object-oriented uh, programming the solid principles and in our code I'm gonna give you an example how I use it almost every day by creating mocks for testing and making sure that it is the test mocks match our actual implementation that matches our actual abstraction class so that everything is synced up and working well together so let's go ahead and dive into it Hey guys, I want to take a moment to recommend Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp to you. Dev Mountain's been a long term sponsor of mine. I appreciate their support as I've helped grow the channel and tell everyone about their great facilities. I've actually been to their Provo, Utah campus, and it's beautiful. So if you're interested in a full stack JavaScript bootcamp, they provide housing alongside the tuition, so you can get up and go today. They're one of the most affordable boot camps in the world, in the States, and I highly suggest you check them out at devmountain.com. So let's take uh, a little bit of some Angular code. This is gonna be a mixture of TypeScript and Angular, and what we're looking at is a service here. So um, this service is gonna go and do some API call. Um, our service is called Hacker News Service, and we said, you know, it's pretty pretty normal. There's nothing out of the ordinary, but it's not utilizing the dependency inversion principle, which would have us abstract a interface to allow us to not only extend the uh, extend this, but make it so that other dependencies that are dependent upon this class are. And so, let's say we wanted to mock this file out for testing purposes because. You know, we already have our test, uh, make sure Hacker News Service is doing what it needs to do, but we don't necessarily want to actually use the actual implementation and make those API calls, obviously. So we're gonna have a mock class, but there's nothing tying these two together. At the very least, we can tie them together and make sure that we don't have an issue with our mock not matching what it's supposed to be. So how might we solve that? Well, if you had a interface in this clip in this case we're using an abstract class but it's the same idea but if we had a interface to invert the dependencies so that we don't really care about the low level dependencies and the low level de uh, low level in this aspect is the actual implementation of the mock the implementation of the actual service and instead we're just going to define the actual class itself like so what we're gonna do is we're going to take this and we're going to extend the iHacker new service, which is fine, what is the issue here? No, oh, this is just some TypeScript stuff. Um, actually, we're gonna use implement, so I don't have to, it's same, same, same thing, more or less. And so now we're saying, okay, cool. We actually understand that it has everything it needs for iHacker new service, and we might find out that our mock is doing it wrong. It might be that there's an issue there. So let's go ahead and implement iHacker new service. And in this case, oh, still the future decorator, but 
I wanted, I thought this was gonna blow up, but didn't. But now, both of these are extending the correct dependency. It is extending the abstract class or the interface. Now, in TypeScript, we have a way of injecting the interface, and that would be how we would actually consume this, is we would inject the interface into the class, and then depending upon our dependency injection method in Angular, you have modules that handle that. It would inject your actual surface itself, its service itself, while providing the the uh, interface. Let's go ahead and let me show you some code of where you might do something like that. So here we're looking at the module, which is how Angular handles its dependency injection, or hat handles its managing of dependencies might be a better way of saying that. And you'll see that we are providing the abstract class that doesn't do anything, but it is there to say, this is what is expected of our service. This is what our service should be doing. We don't really care how it does it, just as long as you meet the requirements. And then when we actually go and want to have the actual instantiation of that abstract class, uh, which is the actual surface itself, use this class, use that class. And then if we had like a component, if we were to do a component, we'll just comp dot component uh, dot ts. And we want to x, uh, now it's getting a little angular three, but uh, if we had a component like so, that's supposed to be component. And we want to export whatever, export class, something. In the constructor, the dependency we inject is the actual interface. And then it's just going to go and pull that class because we've inverted our dependencies. We made sure our dependency injection done that. That's just a little more of how you might actually use it. But you get the general idea is that if you're going to have something mocking a service, or you're going to, which you will, and you, you want to have a high level object maintain what everything does, if you want to think of it that way, and then extend that out or implement it out. And that's a, that's a, a very realistic I, item that I use quite often for the dependency inversion principle. But anyhow guys, I hope you found that helpful. As always, don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. If you're interested in any of my courses, I highly recommend the 100 algorithm challenge to help you ace your next technical interview. There's a link in the description below, get just for 10 bucks. I'll see you guys next time, bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to check out my 100 algorithm challenge course, get you prepped for those technical interviews to make sure you get nice offers. I, I actually just added some new content to it so you can get prepared for those technical phone screens as well. There's a link in the description to get it for just $9.99.